So I wanted to talk about sample rates and bit depths. What the heck are they and why are they so important to your recordings? What's up guys, Mark here from the Promix Academy with another Logic Pro tutorial. In this video, we'll be creating a brand new session looking specifically at the sample rate and bit depth settings you should be using in your recordings. So if this is your first time opening Logic, it'll start by asking you which kind of project you'd like to create. In our case, an empty project is absolutely fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Next, it will ask you what kind of track you'd like to begin recording. Again, an audio file is just fine, so I'm going to create an audio file. So when we talk about sample rates and bit depths, um, although both of these terms represent a very complex process, we can crudely describe it as a means for converting audio from an analog to a digital or a binary form. Now that sounds really complicated, but we can uh, think of it in terms of when you're singing into a microphone, for example, um, what's coming out the other end is simply an electrical current. Our system therefore needs to take that electrical current and convert it into something that it can interpret and then process. So uh, let's start with sample rates. You'll find the sample rate menu under file, project settings, and down to audio. And we can see that uh, the default sample rate has been set at 44.1 kilohertz, and we have options all the way up to 192 kilohertz. So uh, something to take into account here is that the higher your sample rate setting, uh, the better quality your audio will be, but also a significantly larger file size. So before we can select which one is right for us, we need to understand a little bit more about what a sample rate is. We can define a sample rate as the number of samples taken per second during that conversion process from analog to digital. The general rule when setting your sample rate is that it needs to be at least twice the value of the highest frequency that you'll be recording. Now you might say, well, if the human ear can only hear up to maybe 17, 18 kilohertz, um, 20 in extreme cases, um, then what's the point of recording anything above that? That's a fair point, but there is something else to take into consideration here, and that is something called foldover. Uh, there are indeed instruments which do um, emit frequencies beyond the human range of hearing, uh, which we still need to cater for, um, because when we convert the audio from analog to digital, those frequencies still need to go somewhere. Take cymbals on drums, for example. They will extend well into the 20, low 20s and beyond um, with a series of harmonics. Those frequencies do need to go somewhere. And if we have a, a low sample rate, what happens is those frequencies just get folded back over into our recording range. And that can result in a, a noticeable dissonance in that upper register. So when we are recording something like cymbals or uh, something in that frequency range, we need to make sure that our sample rate caters for those frequencies. Generally speaking, I'm recording at either 88.2 and on occasions 96 kilohertz. Next, let's talk about bit depth. We can describe bit depth as the number of bits of information taken in each sample during that same conversion process. We can find the options under Logic Pro 10, Preferences, and Recording. And Logic by default gives us a bit depth of 24. If I uncheck that box, it gives me a bit depth of 16. So why is that important to your recording? Well, similarly to sample rate, the higher your bit depth, the better quality of the audio will be, uh, simply because it's storing and gathering and storing more information. Uh, but this will also have an impact on your file size. So which one is right for us? Well, we can answer that with something called a signal to noise ratio, uh, or more commonly a noise floor. The noise floor is uh, a, a, the noise that is generated uh, simply from the recording process. Now, if you have a lower bit rate, you have a smaller file size, but you also have a higher noise floor. 
whereas with a higher bitrate you have a larger file size but a lower noise floor. So why is that important for us? Well, uh, most arguably uh, it comes down to dynamic processing. Further down the line, when you want your track mixed, you might apply some compression where you want to control the peak signals of a track by bringing them down slightly. Uh, you compensate for that by bringing the entire track back up. But you're not just bringing the track back up, you're actually bringing the noise floor with it. And that can become quite noticeable if you've recorded at a lower bitrate. So my advice is then to leave it on 24-bit recording. So lastly, and as a bit of a bonus, I want to talk about I.O. buffer size. Now this doesn't have any reflection or bearing on the quality of your audio recording, but it does have a, uh, an impact on the quality of your recording session. So let's jump up to uh, Logic Pro 10 again. Preferences, uh, but this time to audio. And we can see a little way down we have I.O. buffer size and I think by default it is set to 128 samples, uh, but we have a bunch of options. The uh, buffer size refers to the rate and sizes at which your processor processes the information. The lower the buffer size, the CPU will process very, very quickly um, and in smaller chunks. Um, but is much more demanding on your CPU. Whereas the higher buffer sizes um, will process it in, in larger chunks and a lot slower um, and is much less demanding on your CPU. So which one do we choose? Um, that comes down to something called latency. Latency is the amount of time that your input takes to reach your output. For example, if you have a singer singing into a microphone again, uh, the audio has to travel all the way through to your, uh, your interface, into your laptop. The laptop needs to process it and then spit it out the other end back into your singer's headphones. That takes a small amount of time. Now, if your buffer size is set to a very low amount, like 32, that will take almost no time at all. We can see the resulting latency in this case is almost imperceivable, if not imperceivable altogether. Whereas if we set our uh, buffer size to 1024, we can see that this has increased quite dramatically uh, the resulting latency. And if you're a singer or a performer listening uh, or singing into your microphone um, and hearing it back uh, a little while later, that can be very off-putting and it, it will no doubt um, affect that performance. So we want to set this to somewhere that we know our computer can handle um, but also won't result in a huge amount of latency for your performer. That looks good to me. At 128 samples, is going to be virtually imperceivable. Um, looks good to me. So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it useful, please do give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, just drop us a comment below. We've got some freebies in the description. And if you want to take this even more seriously, check out the Pro Mix Academy. Details to follow.